with another system design interview covering designing a file streaming service um, for videos. And if this is the first time you're on my channel, welcome. I upload videos about system design, technical interviews, and general career advice based on my experience as a software engineer at Amazon. I am glad you found me. Um, and if you find this uh, video interesting or any of the content interesting about getting into tech, about being in tech, or breaking into tech, um, make sure you subscribe and like this video. It really helps me and gives me motivation to keep uploading these. And also just gives me like some barometer to understand like what you want and what I can do better to um, create content that excites you or want, keeps, uh, keeps you coming back. Because to me, I, I want to help you break into tech and that's my mission as a YouTube channel. Um, so, in this video, um, same topic as before about uh, system design, I'm going to go through the high level design of a video streaming service, kind of similar to YouTube or Vimeo. Um, so over here, I have a system design, a system diagram. We're gonna talk about the backend process of processing, uploading, and um, connecting different parts of a microservice oriented architecture. So let's go ahead and understand like what a um, video streaming service looks like. You're watching this on a video streaming service already. So um, we can go to YouTube and we can see that there are a bunch of YouTube videos. Um, when we click on a YouTube video, then we are presented with a page that streams a video from a backend service. So high level, this is, um, this, this makes a lot of sense. So what happens on the back end when we upload a new video? Um, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So when we upload a video, we can define a video upload as uploading a file blob, a user ID, a video name, and a video metadata. And then we can describe getting a video as getting the video ID and, getting, and sending the video streaming set, uh, settings. So when we upload a video, as a client, we send it to a load balancer. A load balancer exists because there are multiple web servers. Um, one web server to handle the traffic of YouTube wouldn't be enough. Um, we need to replicate this web server over multiple um, copies to handle the load. And we bridge this all together using something called a load balancer. The load balancer will detect which area, um, which server has the least amount of load and then send the traffic that um, to the server to handle. So when a video comes in, it goes through the load balancer to a web server, and then the web server handles the upload. The upload uses something called a multi-part upload, and it's a, um, it's a uh, TCP, it's a wrapper on top of TCP that um, the browser has a convenient API for. The browser will send parts of a video um, in sequence, and once all parts of the video have been received by the web server, it will receive the ACK to send back to the client, letting the client know that the, the file was received, um, and um, then we can move on to the next part of the process. So we need some sort of temporary holding area for this video file, so we can use a temporary large file store, and we can either build the solution in-house using HDFS, which is an Apache server, um, and HDFS basically lets you replicate um, replicate a file system over a large amount of computers. It makes it easier to um, store a large amount of data that um, isn't, isn't capable of being handled by a single computer. And it lets you use cheaper commodity hardware um, to bring down server costs. Another way is we can use a managed server like Amazon S3 or Google Colossus. This uh, is more of a custom file server um, that's similar to HDFS, but they handle all of the, um, the saving, the indexing um, in-house, so you don't have to worry about that. And just like some back of the napkin calculations, the average file size, let's say is one gigabyte, and there's about 500,000 um, video hours uploaded every day, which if an average video is 15 minutes, then that comes out to around 2,000 terabytes daily. Um, so depending on how 
bigger engineering team is, it might make sense to just use a managed server because then you don't have to think about the architecture. So we just store the temporary video that's been uploaded into the large file store, and then we send that the um, send a new job to the processing stack. So before we do that, we need to create some sort of shared video processing state for holding for keeping track of the encoding. If we have a multi-stage processing stack, we can't have a file that goes to transcription before it's done with encoding. So this shared state allows every part of the processing stack to work in unison and we have multiple hosts for each processing stack because we wouldn't want we don't want to be bottlenecked by a single host so we can replicate the work across multiple um, computers and for here uh, we can look at the basic features of youtube which are encoding a file into a different format as well as providing subtitles so the subtitle is auto generated um, this uh, that means that there needs to be a transcription layer um, as part of the processing stack. There's multiple different qualities. So there's multiple different um, versions of the video being generated in HD and an SD version. Um, and from there, that means we have at least two services on the processing stack. The processing stack can be replicated over n number of hosts. Every host does a single action. And then when the action is done, they pass it along to the next stage in the processing stack using a pub sub me mechanism. And they share the videos, uh, the video state in this Redis, uh, Redis cache. They can also use Ben cache or a SQL database. Redis is fast and it's also um, highly available. So Redis is a very, it's a very solid pick. So once it's done, it saves the resulting files in a large file store and deletes the temporary file that was, ex that was created during the upload. There needs to be a place to save this, um, this uh, new uh, structure of data. So they used a shared video database. The options for this are SQL or NoSQL. Um, of course, a big question is a sharding strategy. So um, we can shard on ID um, for this. As the ID grows bigger, we can split up the video tables um, the video uploaded tables into different tables and then shard it uh, horizontally that way if we use SQL. If we use a document database, we can throw giant JSON blobs and um, nest objects, and we can shard based on uh, ID as well. Um, so something that uh, the schema could look like would be a, a user ID, a video metadata, analytics metadata, a process file URL, temp file URL, HD file URL, transcription, uh, video processing state, and video, video uh, fingerprint. So the fingerprint is a way of caching the video so that if two videos get uploaded, then they um, they can be identified, and we can um, we can replicate some of the data. So we don't have to. Um, we don't have to store every video individually. The user ID is probably self-explanatory, is whoever uploaded the video. The video metadata is an object that stores details about the video, like the height, the width, the resolution, um, as well as the length um, and stuff like that. The analytics metadata could be a nested object that tells you the streams and the, um, the number of views for a video. Process file, these URLs are objects that are stored on a large file store and they are um, used to actually retrieve the data for playing the um, for playing the video when it's um, retrieved with the get video options um, and then the video processing state is a current state at which the video is um, at the at the current processing state at which the video lies um, so overall this is pretty straightforward implementation of get up video or upload video and then get video would simply call the web server retrieve the schema based on the the video id and then retrieve the data from the large file store so pretty self-explanatory um where can we go from this um some other follow-up questions that you could get or might be worth considering are watch patterns um since for example uh Something I've actually heard about in a, a system design interview is what if we wanted to change this instead from a generic video streaming service into an adult video streaming service. So 
the question is mostly around traffic patterns. If you use a generic video service, you can expect in, in North America, a large amount of stream videos between the hours of 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Those are, or 12, 12 a.m. midnight. Those are the general high traffic times for streaming video because that's when most people are up. So you can predict using that, that you will need more web servers during the day um, and then less, you can spin down a few web servers at night to cut costs. Another thing to consider is when do people upload the most videos? So you can assume that most people might upload them around noon or in the afternoon or at night. So during those times, we would definitely need to host more of processing power. We would need to spin up more hosts for encoding and transcription in order to make sure those uh, videos get completed relatively quickly. Um, another interesting conversation is if we were to change this to a adult video streaming service, how would it change the traffic patterns? And the conversation would be around when to spin up hosts. In a in an adult streaming service, you can expect most video streams are between the hours of 10, 10 p.m. and like maybe 4 a.m. So we would need maximum amount of hosts during those hours, and we can spin down a lot of hosts. Um, spin down a lot of hosts during the day. In addition, you can also assume that the processing stack could be spun down because we would have mostly uh, downloads versus uploads. So we would need to replicate the data across multiple different uh, large file stores and um, make, make the data highly, make the videos highly available in order to handle that amount of traffic. Um, so another option would be also if you used a white label, if you wanted to make this a white label solution, how would you um, how would you transform this? And the white label solution, we could rep we could keep a lot of the infrastructure, but we would need to create different. We would need to do a lot of the work on structuring the user video database, since every user would um, every person's videos is unique to that organization. So we could do another sharding based on the organization, or we can add permissions to data to make sure that only people in an organization can retrieve their um, own videos. So this is like a pretty expandable example of a system design question. Um, very dependent on the parameters you passed in, when people are gonna be watching videos, and when streaming is at its highs. So um, overall, backend is relatively simple to create. It's just a simple, uh, you could reduce it down to basically this. Um, and yeah, if you like this video, um, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel below. That would motivate me again to upload more videos like this. And if you like this format, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you didn't like this format, tell me where I can improve. And thank you again. Um, it's Justin, I help you break into tech and I provide videos about system design, technical interviews, and my own experience as a software engineer at Amazon and some of my background in computer science. Um, thanks again for watching and peace guys, have a great day.